Alright, all you Streetlight Crusaders, and I guess a couple of you wrestling fans out there are still up for tonight. Welcome back to the Tuesday Night Special. And now it's time for us to talk about what happened during this week's edition of Monday Night Raw from the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. And Maestro currently is telling me right now, why in the world do we keep mentioning where it's coming from when chances are it's going to be in the same place for the next couple of months? Well, hey, that's what we do here. And hey, they might set a new record with it too. <laughs> and speaking of records, folks, Monday Night Raw would kick off with Drew McIntyre not only being announced as the first UK champion to ever become WWE champion and also the first man from Scotland to become a WWE champion as well. Granted, they mentioned it later on in the night, but it was something we forgot to mention last week after WrestleMania went off the air. And especially after that whole Big Show match that he had to deal with and he being Drew McIntyre. And Drew McIntyre would say thank you to everybody out there in TV land currently watching this at home and inviting him into his home to help you relieve the stress of the current situations in the world. And would even go as far to say thank you to everybody for making his WrestleMania moment special. Despite the people not being there, they were there in his heart. Just like he said during the Chronicle Adventures that was featured during his WWE Network special. But before this touching moment could get even more special, Drew McIntyre would lay a challenge to anybody and everybody who wants to step up to try to fight against the new WWE Champion, and his past would come back to haunt him in the form of El Idolo, Andrade Cien Almas, who would step up to the plate to challenge none other than Drew McIntyre. Or in this case, I would have to say Selena Vega, who would say that you had two WrestleMania moments, but on Friday, who was on the shelf, didn't have any. So we're here to try to make up for that. And it would be a match made for later on tonight that Andrade Cien Almas would go one-on-one -on -one against Drew McIntyre. But besides that match being made, folks, the next thing to take place on Monday Night Raw would see Asuka going one-on-one -on -one against Ruby Riot for a qualifying spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And during this set match, Ruby Riot, who thought Asuka was not taking this match seriously by dancing to her entrance music and also patting her on the head and doing the usual dances and song and dance routines that she's been known to do for the past couple of weeks, only for Ruby Riot to slap her in the side of the head and say, I don't want this dance king Asuka, I want the real Asuka. Where's the real Asuka? And oh boy, she would really get the real Asuka, all right because despite Ruby Riot pulling off a couple of cool clotheslines and even a drop kick to the side of the head of one Asuka during this match, she would pay for it in and outside of the ring with not only a nasty roundhouse kick to the side of the head while Asuka was dancing on the barricade, but also a near attempt and reversal of her Riot senton from the top rope into the Asuka lock, only for Ruby Riot to escape it, but the second time it was applied, Ruby Riot not so lucky and would submit in the center of the ring to Asuka and the Asuka lock for Asuka to be the first entrant for the Money in the Bank ladder match for the women's side. Not bad. And this should be a lesson to Ruby Riot. Never challenge Asuka like that. And after the match was over, she would say to the on the spot correspondent that I forgot the name of, nobody is ready for Asuka. And if she keeps kicking people in the head like that, no they won't be. They might not even remember her name after that. <laughs> anyway, speaking of people getting kicked in the head, the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would see Aleister Black going one-on-one -on -one against Oni Lorcan. And during this match, 
only Lorcan would bring a serious spike to Alistair Black by not only doing sharp uppercuts and elbows to the face of one Alistair Black during this match, and would keep trying to go for a half and half suplex, which would ultimately actually be his downfall during this match, cause once Alistair Black got rolling and would be able to hit him in the head with a tiger knee right to the side of his head, next thing you know, Alistair Black from out of nowhere would be able to hit a nasty black mass, sending Oni Lorcan through a loop, causing him to lose this exhibition-like match via pinfall. And not to mention the fact that Oni Lorcan, even though he was highly impressive, gave Alistair Black one of his longest matches on Monday Night Raw for this year. Yeah, very impressive. Well, if we're not counting the whole thing with Eric Rowan and the whole Robo Spider thing that was in his case. So I guess, yeah, technically would be one of the longest matches he had this year that wasn't against developmental talent. Yeah, we'll say that much. And after the match was over, after it was revealed by MVP that he will be fighting one-on-one -on -one against Austin Theory in a qualifying match for the Money in the Bank ladder match, he would get asked, what's his game plan? And for Alistair Black to respond back, game plan? My game plan is to win. And that's the best game plan you could ever have in a match. Not to mention, not to reveal anything that he's going to do during the match, but I got a feeling it's going to involve a lot of Tiger knees to the head. Man, I love Sagat and Street Fighter. <laughs> but besides Sagat and Street Fighter, folks, the next thing to take place on Monday Night Raw will involve Becky Lynch not only saying that she's going to make history once again after she beats whoever decides to come after with that Money in the Bank contract, but would also go along and say that what she did at WrestleMania to the cage fighter, she originally thought it was heart versus skill, but instead it was mind games with the fact that she was being so silly during the weeks leading into WrestleMania that it got into the head of Shayna Baszler ultimately costing her. And speaking of Shayna Baszler, folks, the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would be Shayna Baszler going one-on-one -on -one against Sarah Logan. And my God, I feel real bad for Sarah Logan because Shayna Baszler was absolutely pissed backstage and then had to deal with an interviewer asking her about the controversial remarks that Ronda Rousey made over the past couple of days and would also have to deal with the whole thing with Becky Lynch taunting her afterwards. Yeah, let's just say Sarah Logan put up one hell of a fight but unfortunately after getting ragtagged on the ground and then having her elbow and I guess shoulder pad stepped on or just her shoulder and her elbow stepped on, and for her to cry on the ground in pain, the referee would have no choice but to wrap this match up in quick fashion, giving the win originally to Sarah Logan, but with the fact that she could not continue, reversed the decision and said that the Queen of Spades is moving on to the Money in the Bank ladder match. And yeah, after she won the match, she would throw the chair and then would just walk away. Yeah, Shayna Baszler not in the mood to deal with anybody or anything at all. So yeah, the fact that that interviewer actually showed up before the match really put Sarah Logan in some serious danger. And speaking of people who was in danger after or during the match, take your pick, folks, would be none other than Austin Theory going one-on-one -on -one against Akira Tozawa. And during this match, Akira Tozawa living up to his name as a stamina monster, not only being able to pull off hurricane-like kicks to the side of the head, and would even be able to do an apron senton from the inside of the ring into the barricade into Austin Theory during this match. But unfortunately, after Akira Tozawa would try to go for an octopus, or makeshift Rings of Saturn standing version, he would end up getting caught and put into an 
modified version of a TKO that Austin Theory calls the AKO or the AKI. I don't remember what the actual name of it was. All I know is it led to the win for Austin Theory during this said match. And after the match was over, Austin Theory alongside with El Idolo Andrade Cien Almas and Angel Garza would put the beat down on poor Akira Tozawa with none other than Andrade Cien Almas actually doing a hammer knock DDT off the top rope to none other than Akira Tozawa to finish off the beat down and for them to have a Captain Planet celebration with their arms up high in the air, most likely saying go planet. Uh, well, according to the maestro, not saying go planet, but instead just celebrating the fact they beat the crap out of one Akira Tozawa. Right. And to continue this momentum that this trios would have, the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would feature none other than Angel Garza going one-on-one -on -one against Tahuti Miles, an NXT hopeful that hoped to beat uh, Angel Garza that night, and I almost didn't get that full joke out because the Hootie Miles during this match, despite showing a good showing in the opening of this set contest, would get knocked right out of the sky by Angel Garza with a nasty drop kick, almost sending him out of the ring. And after that would go down, that would just lead to the ultimate defeat of Tahuti Miles, cause next thing you know, he would get caught up in a wing clipper for Angel Garza to win this match, and not only that, but to serenade a cameraman on the outside of the ring and pull off more Rico Suave-like moves than you would know via pinfall. And yeah, it was a one-sided contest during this match after that drop kick out of midair. Despite Angel Garza trying to swoon a cameraman at ringside. Yes, Maestro, I know I said it, but come on. How Fabio do you have to be to do that? And isn't there a six feet rule in social distancing when it comes to things like that? Well, I guess it doesn't apply to Angel Garza. And the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would see none other than Nia Jax going one-on-one -on -one against Kyrie Zayn in yet another women's qualifying match for the Money in the Bank ladder match. And during this match, Kyrie Zayn... <laughs> oh my god, Kyrie Zayn to start this match would feel the irresistible force of Nia Jax by getting pushed out of mid-flight and just get tossed around like a rag doll, ultimately leading to Nia Jax winning this match with a move she likes to call the Annihilator, which is the Samoan drop that she's known for, for, yeah, Kyrie Zayn to lose this match in emphatic fashion via pinfall. Even though before this match she would say, confidence, confidence, nobody's ready for the Kabuki Warriors. Well, apparently, Nia Jax was. Yeah. It was bad, folks. It was real bad. <laughs> anyway, next match to take place on Monday Night Raw, or before the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw, you would see none other than the new NXT Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair, not only talking about the fact about how none other than Rhea Ripley, who brought the big fight at WrestleMania, learned the number one rule to bow down to the Queen, just like Io Shirai will in their upcoming contest, but then would say that she proved that she is the big thing in the women's division in WWE. I would have said not only in NXT and Raw and SmackDown, but no, she just basically said that she was the best out of anybody, like she usually does. Yeah, so same old song and dance from Charlotte Flair. And the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw, or more or less a, I don't even think I've been called this a match, would be Bobby Lashley going one-on-one -on -one against No Way Jose. 
and during this match, and I keep calling it a match out of habit, but No Way Jose was not able to pull off any form of offense, not only getting hit with a disgusting spine buster for Lana to open her mouth at ringside and say, FINISH HIM! FINISH HIM! For Bobby Lashley to go outside the ring and not even take this match seriously, trying to tell her, you know what, shut the hell up! And then would go back inside the ring, and then hear her still talking, saying, Oh, you're still talking? Why are you still talking? Only for a No Way Jose to take advantage of the situation and try to go for a roll-up, only for a near fall. For Bobby Lashley to respond back with a hellacious spear, and for No Way Jose to not get the win, and for Bobby Lashley to win this match via pinfall. And we almost forgot to mention last week, at WrestleMania, thanks to managerial services, Bobby Lashley has lost two years in a row at WrestleMania due to the managers he decided to keep at his side, and would say last week that he needs a new manager and a new wife after what happened. Ah, so he's starting to wise up of lying the world roots of laughter. Ah, it only took a couple of months, too. And the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would see the Viking Raiders going up against the Ballroom Blitzkrieg Tag Team of Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. And for anyone out there wondering why in the world I call this team the Ballroom Blitzkrieg, well their lightning based offense during this match threw the Viking Raiders during this set contest into a loop including Cedric Alexander doing a cool basement drop kick during this match, and even Ricochet pulling off a beautiful springboard lariat to try to take out Eric during this match. Or according to the maestro Ivar, because I keep getting their names wrong. And then this match, unfortunately for the Ballroom Blitzkrieg team, would come to an emphatic end, with not only Cedric Alexander getting caught with a full Nelson Tiger knee to the back of the skull into a roundhouse kick by Eric, but then you would see none other than Ricochet getting caught in a Viking experience like no other that actually looked like a world's strongest slam after how much he tried to fight it to get out of it for the Viking Raiders to win this match via pinfall. And then backstage, after all of that went down, next thing you would see would be none other than the Street Profits joking around until Bianca Belair would come out and say, you guys have never beaten the Viking Raiders before, so instead of playing around, you need to focus on trying to get that smoke. Which apparently I learned means to get the fight. Right. And if they tried to fight against the Viking Raiders at this point, with the dominance they've been on in the past couple of months in the main roster of WWE, they might get more smoke than they can handle. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> and the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw would be the main event of the evening, which would see none other than the new WWE Champion, the Scottish Terminator Drew McIntyre, going one-on-one -on -one against the United States Champion El Idolo, Andrade Cianamas, with Selena Vega, Angel Garza, and Austin Theory all in his corner. And do you think those numbers would help him out to try to make history repeat itself after what happened to Drew McIntyre with the fact that the last time these two were in the ring with championship rolled around their waist would see Drew McIntyre losing six months of his career? No, history would not repeat itself because Drew McIntyre would say that he is going to destroy him during this match and the Scottish Terminator would not disappoint. Because during this match, Drew McIntyre would do a modified version of the Claymore kick in the corner to Andrade, hitting him flush in the face, and not only that, but would hit him with a glass cow kiss to start off the match. 
and would even light his chest up with a couple of good chops. And when Austin Theory decided to get involved in this match on the outside of the ring, he would pay for it as well after Andrade Cien Almas would spill into his own little miniature faction on the outside of the ring. Next thing you know, Drew McIntyre would chop the living hell out of Austin Theory after he grabbed his leg that sounded almost like a gunshot. And my god, I got a feeling he's gonna feel that for weeks. And speaking of people who's gonna feel something for weeks, after the match would go back inside the ring and after Selena Vega would still try to distract the Scottish Terminator from his main target, Drew McIntyre would still be able to get back into this match and hit an inverted Alabama slam and then count down from 3 to 1, hitting a nasty Claymore sending Andrade out of his shoes for Drew McIntyre to win this match via pinfall. And after the match was over, next thing you know, you would see none other than Seth Rollins charging to the ring after delivering promo after promo of what he was going to do and the fact that Kevin Owens crucified him again, but still to have belief in your Monday Night Messiah and would also say that he's going to stomp out all of the beliefs of everybody who didn't believe in him in the form of one Drew McIntyre. And Angel Garza would be right there on the scene to help with a chop block, giving Seth Metal enough opportunity to sneak up from behind and hit the new WWE Champion in the face with a super kick, and then follow it up with not one, but two blackouts to knock the lights out of the Scottish Terminator to wrap up Monday Night Raw for this week. And oh, before we forget folks, announced by MVP himself, besides the match that's going to take place between Aleister Black and Austin Theory in the Money in the Bank qualifying match, you will also see none other than Rey Mysterio going one-on-one -on -one against the Disciple Murphy, and Apollo going one-on-one -on -one against the greatest ladder match competitor of all time, no it's not Edge, is MVP himself. So yeah, somebody who thinks he's that full of himself has to be half man and half amazing to beat Apollo Crews. And yeah, MVP is. So what will happen next week, we will find out then, folks. But until then, we might as well head back into this music. And when we return, we'll be back with more streetlight shenanigans than you could shake a flashlight at right after this. So don't fall asleep just yet, folks, and stay tuned. 